Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Asif Qureshi and you are watching Dr. Asif Lectures. If you are new to the channel, please subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon. So today we are going to discuss about apoptosis, which is one of the different cellular death pathways that happen in your body. So apoptosis literally means falling off and you will understand why we call it falling off because the cells ultimately gets um, from the inside fragmented and looks like it's falling apart. Ultimately, it is taken up by the phagocytes. So the literal meaning of the word apoptosis is basically falling off. And remember that this is also known as a programmed cell death pathway, which requires ATP. So apoptosis is a programmed cell death pathway, which needs ATP. So it's an energy dependent cellular death mechanism. Okay. Now what basically happens in this is cells activates enzymes uh, within its own structure, which are basically the caspases and those caspases degrades the cellular proteins, the cytoskeletal proteins as well as the nuclear stuff. Okay. And as a result of this, apoptotic cells are uh, generated, which we will discuss in a bit. And they are then taken up and eaten up by the macrophages. Now, one very important point to remember about apoptosis is the fact that in the whole process of apoptosis, the cell membrane usually remains intact. And because the cell membrane remains intact, the cellular enzymes and the cellular contents do not leak in the periphery. And since it does not leak in the periphery, there is no inflammation elicited. So that's an important point for you to remember. It differs from other cellular pathways in this particular context that it does not initiate inflammation because the cell membrane remains intact. Okay. Uh, so this is the basic overview of apoptosis. What you need to remember is it is programmed cell death. It requires ATP. As a result of this process, apoptotic bodies are produced, which are taken up by the macrophages and it does not elicit inflammation. Okay. Now let's dive a little deeper into what apoptosis can be. Apoptosis can be broadly divided into physiologic apoptosis and pathologic apoptosis. Okay. Now, when we talk about physiologic apoptosis, it happens during embryogenesis. For example, when these, you know, fingers are made, initially there are webs there between the fingers, but those webs, they disappear as you grow and that disappearance or death of the cell is due to apoptosis. Okay. Similarly, um, the lumen of the gut is produced by the process of apoptosis. So apoptosis happens at several stages of embryogenesis. So that's absolutely physiological. What else is physiological? Removal of inflammatory cells at the end of inflammation. Now think about it. Anywhere in your body, when there is inflammation, uh, many inflammatory cells come in, they start attacking the insult and they try to, you know, combat the body and take out the body from the uh, inflammatory situation. So once the stimulus is over and once the inflammation is all well and good and your body is now safe, do you think all those immune cells which were recruited at the site of inflammation should stay there for the rest of their life? No, they ultimately go away by apoptosis. So that is also a mechanism whereby uh, when the stimulus is gone, the cells undergo apoptosis because they are no more needed. So the inflammatory cells are not needed after the inflammation is over. Therefore, these cells undergo apoptosis and uh, they die. They die because that's part of the plan. Inflammation is over and in a programmed way, they die. Okay. What, what else is physiological? Turnover in proliferative cells. There are so many proliferative cells in your body and they, after a particular time period, they, they die, they vanish away using apoptosis. And uh, also very important is the menstrual cycle. You know, every month in females, the endometrial cells, they fall off and they are then uh, proliferating again and then fall off again. So all this falling off mechanism is via apoptosis. Okay. And removal of self-reactive, you know, when, when your body produces lymphocytes, many of the lymphocytes which are recognizing the self-antigen are the lymphocytes which we actually don't need in the body. So they, those are called self-reactive lymphocytes. So your body has a mechanism to eliminate, to order those self-reacting lymphocytes that you should die. And that order is basically the uh, apoptotic pathway. Okay. So all this is happening physiologically. And remember, apoptosis is important for normal physiological 
uh, cycles and purposes. Okay, so apoptosis is important during embryogenesis. Apoptosis is important during day-to-day -day, uh, phenomena in your body. So all this is called physiological. But if things go wrong, that is then known as pathological apoptosis. And the examples include whenever there is DNA damage in a cell. Whenever there are increased reactive oxygen species in the cell, there is hypoxia, generation of misfolded proteins, or there are infections. So these are all the cells which your body thinks are dangerous for you. And therefore your body has mechanisms to get rid of those cells. If there is DNA damage in a cell, it should be gotten rid of. If there is viral infection in a cell, it should be taken away from the body. And your body performs apoptosis for removing these uh, scenarios if they happen in your cells and that is then known as pathological apoptosis okay so uh, you should be able to broadly classify apoptosis into two major uh, classes physiological and pathological okay so uh, recap one more time what is apoptosis program cell death does it need ATP yes does it cause inflammation not usually because the cell membrane is intact okay what are the different types physiological and pathological Let's move on to the next concept. Now there are two pathways. Now you must be asking what actually initiates the apop, what is the signal for apoptotic pathway? So there are basically two pathways, intrinsic pathway and extrinsic pathway, and we will discuss them in a little more detail that what do we mean by intrinsic pathway and what do we mean by extrinsic pathway? But whatever pathway is activated, regardless of this, ultimately, what are the proteins which are activated? Caspases. Now these are the enzymes, these are the proteins within your cell, which once activated, if they are activated, they will cause a lot of things which will make your cell to die. For example, they will cause cytoskeletal fragmentation. So proteins within the cytosol, they start breaking away, you know, and their nuclear fragmentation, membrane has blabs and apoptotic bodies are produced and ultimately that particular cell where this pathway was initiated will be eaten up by macrophages, okay? So that's the kind of overview of the cascade of apoptosis. So apoptosis has how many pathways for activation? Two pathways, intrinsic pathway and extrinsic pathway. Intrinsic pathway and extrinsic both pathways lead to generation of or activation of caspases. And once caspases are activated, they will cause uh, cytoskeletal fragmentation, nuclear fragmentation, formation of apoptotic body, and the cell will be then eaten up by the macrophages. So the cell will vanish away. Either this is happening physiologically, many of the physiological pathways are basically uh, via the intrinsic mechanism. This can also happen um, pathologically, if there is a viral infection, if there is reactive oxygen species. So you need to remember what are the two different pathways for apoptosis, okay? Now with this, we move on to the major, major figure. Now this is the main figure that you must master in order to understand what is apoptosis. And this is a cell which in a minute will undergo apoptosis, okay? Here in the center, you see the mitochondria and caspases. Because caspases, you know, are the mainstay. They are the central point for the apoptosis pathway. They can be activated by intrinsic pathway or extrinsic pathway. So let us first discuss what happens in the intrinsic pathway. Now, in the intrinsic pathway, before we begin the intrinsic pathway, you should have this common general understanding. Whenever from the mitochondria, this little protein is released, which is called cytochrome C. Whenever mitochondria releases cytochrome C, it will activate caspases. So you need to understand it this way. In usual circumstances, cytochrome C is inhibited by another set of proteins, which is known as BCL2 family of proteins. Now BC, BCL2 family of proteins are actually, they are good for you in certain amount because if they are there, they are inhibiting cytochrome C. And hey, they are stopping apoptosis. So you have to remember that BCL2 is anti-apoptotic. This is a very common question in examinations, particularly the undergraduate examination, that which one of the following is an anti-apoptotic protein. So an anti-apoptotic protein is something which inhibits caspase activation. And here you have this example, BCL2 released in your body, normally expressed in your body, and it inhibits the release of cytochrome C. And once cytochrome C is inhibited, caspases will not be activated, okay? But this is a normal phenomena. But what happens 
if apoptosis has to take place, either normally, physiologically, or pathologically, this is what happens, you see? In the intrinsic pathway, uh, either there is decreased growth factor. Now, when we say decreased growth factor, that basically means, imagine a tissue where there was a lot of inflammation, for example, and a lot of immune cells were there, and the immune cells were getting continuous proliferating signals, such as interleukin-2, but once the inflammation is over, that signal, interleukin-2, is gone. And once that signal is gone, the cell will undergo apoptosis. So removal of proliferative signal initiates apoptosis, okay? So decrease in the growth factor, radiation, reactive oxygen species, toxins, misfolded proteins, hypoxia, all of these things, what they can do? They can activate P53, which in turn activates a group of proteins which are called BACs and BAC. Now, BACs and BAC proteins they release, they have a positive effect on the release of cytochrome C. And you now know, whenever cytochrome C is released, what happens? Caspases are activated. So, so let's go back, let's go back, let's go back. So mitochondria contains which protein? Cytochrome C. What does cytochrome C does? Activates caspases. What is normally happening in your body? Which protein is expressed? Which inhibits cytochrome C release? BCL2. But if there is decreasing growth signal, if there is any insults to the cell, such as radiation, hypoxia, infection, toxins, reactive oxygen species, what will happen? Activation of P53 and activation of expression of these proteins called BACs and BAC, which induces apoptosis, okay? They make the mitochondrial membrane permeable to cytochrome C. And once cytochrome C is released, that induces uh, the activation of caspases and caspases once activated will do their job, okay? So that is called the intrinsic pathway. Since it involves mitochondria, it is also known as mitochondrial pathway. So intrinsic pathway is also known as mitochondrial pathway, okay? Remember this. Now let's see the, what is the extrinsic pathway. Now in extrinsic pathway, there is either a ligand receptor interaction or involvement of an immune cell. We'll discuss that in a minute. So what, is, what do we mean by uh, ligand and receptor interaction? That basically means that there are two types of receptors in your cells, in almost all the cells, called the FAS receptor and TNFR, tumor necrosis factor receptor. Once they receive the signals, FAS ligand and tumor necrosis factor alpha, TNF alpha, these cells, they undergo apoptosis because interaction of these ligands and receptor induces activation of caspases. The other way the extrinsic pathway works is suppose there is an infected cell and cytotoxic T cells, CD8 positive T cells identify that, they start releasing perforins and granzyme B and that also leads to activation of caspases. So caspases can be activated either via intrinsic pathway using mitochondria or extrinsic pathway using ligand receptor interaction or cytotoxic T positive cells, okay, CD8 positive cells, which we call. Whether it is intrinsic pathway or extrinsic pathway, regardless of this, once caspases are activated, what is the job of caspases? It induces cytoskeletal fragmentation and karyorexis, which is nuclear fragmentation. And once nucleus starts fragmenting and cytoskeleton starts fragmenting, the cell membrane makes a blab and all that fragmented material goes inside that blab and that blab is now known as apoptotic body which also expresses some receptors and those receptors are identified the macrophages and macrophages eat this up so this is all you need to know about apoptosis for any board's exam either you are sitting an undergraduate exam or a postgraduate exam this is all you need to know the definition of apoptosis you need to know what are different types of apoptosis, physiological and pathological. You also need to understand what are the different pathways activating apoptosis, intrinsic pathway and extrinsic pathway. Intrinsic pathway is via mitochondria, release of cytochrome C. And BCL2 inhibits the release. Backs and back proteins are pro-apoptotic. They induce the activation of caspases via more and more cytochrome C. So remember the intrinsic pathway and then the extrinsic pathway is either via the receptor ligand interaction, two types of receptor, two types of ligands, uh, fast ligand and fast receptor, and TNF, TNFR and TNF alpha receptors. If they, there is an interaction, it leads to activation of caspases or if there is a virally infected cell or sometimes a tumor cell, the 
cytotoxic T cells, see the H positive T cells, they attach and release granzymes and perforins, and this leads to activation of caspases. Uh, regardless, again and again, I'm repeating, regardless of the fact that intrinsic pathway is activated or extrinsic pathway is activated, sometimes they both are activated at the same time. So whatever is activated leads to activation of caspases, which then causes nuclear fragmentation and cytosolic fragmentation, generation of apoptotic body, and that apoptotic body is phagocyte Host by macrophages. This is what you now there is a little clinical correlate that you also need to remember is that in lymphoma, now, now that should make sense to you. That's a logical argument. In lymphoma, BCL2 expression is increased. Now think about it. When BCL2 expression is increased, what was BCL2 doing? Is stopping cytochrome C release or augmenting cytosols? It was stopping. So when BCL2 is more and more and more mitochondria will not release cytochrome C. And if mitochondria will not release cytochrome C, then apoptosis will not happen, even if it is normally required. So if apoptosis will not happen, that means that cells will not die. And if the cells will not die, they will stay there. They will keep proliferating. And if they keep proliferating, this is what we call a tumor. So in tumorogenic conditions such as lymphoma, BCL2 expression is increased. So remember that that is an important clinical correlate that in lymphoma, BCL2 is increased. And now it should make sense to you why BCL2 levels are increased, why there is overexpression of BCL2. How does it correlate with lymphoma? Simple. More BCL2, less cytochrome C, less cytochrome C less activation of caspases and less apoptosis. When there is less apoptosis, less cell death and more cell proliferation. So that's the, that's the logic and argument. And the other one written there is defective fast ligand and fast interaction leads to autoimmune disorders. Now that should also make sense to you. See what was the job of fast ligand and fast? Once they have an interaction, cell will undergo apoptosis. And this pathway is very commonly used in removal of your self-reactive lymphocytes. Remember I told you, you have some lymphocytes in your body which identify your self-antigens and if they identify the self-antigen, they will go and attack the self-protein, self-antigens. You don't want that. You don't want your lymphocytes attacking your own proteins, your cartilage, your collagen. You don't want that. So you must remove such nasty lymphocytes. And how do you remove them? By apoptosis. And how does apoptosis get activated in those cells? By fast ligand, fast interaction. So if there is defective fast ligand and fast interaction, such bad lymphocytes will not die because activation of apoptotic pathway will not happen. If those nasty lymphocytes don't die, they will stay in your body and they will identify your proteins and they will attack your proteins because the whole purpose initially was to remove these bad lymphocytes by apoptosis. But, but if the interaction is not happening between the ligand and the receptor, apoptosis doesn't happen. The bad cells start dancing and they are floating around in your body. They kill your own proteins and this is what we call autoimmune disorders. In autoimmune disorders, you have your own self-reactive lymphocytes attacking your own proteins. So uh, that's all guys you should need to remember and know about apoptosis. I try to make it as simple as possible for you. And with this, um, I beg your leave and hopefully I will see you uh, in another video explaining another beautiful topic. So stay tuned, subscribe the channel, hit the bell icon, and I'll share be back with you soon with another video. Thank you.